I think the uh, scripture this morning in your bulletin says Matthew 26, 6 through 13. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be reading from Mark uh, chapter 14, 1 through 9. Um, um, it was now two days before Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The leading priests and the teachers of the religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the Passover celebration. They agreed or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume they asked it could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor so they scolded her harshly but jesus replied leave her alone why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me you will always have the poor among you you can help them whenever you want to but you will not always have me Jesus, has, she has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. This is a little bit weird, but don't worry about it. Think about smell. Think of the different smells that you had this morning. It could have been your toast that was burning. Thank you, I need to get turned on. Thank you, Brent. Always have nice to have somebody around to remind you about stuff. Isn't that right, Mark? But I want you to think with me about smell this morning. It could have been a smell that you had at your breakfast table this morning. And as we are getting close to Thanksgiving, and we are getting close to the Christmas season, think of the different smells, the good smells that you... And I see some of you are already there thinking about that. Um, but we want to think about that this morning because this gospel account is one of the greatest love accounts that there is in the Bible. There are many love accounts in the Bible, but this one is there. So I'd like to share with you just a couple of thoughts about the different smells that this account brings to light. First of all, it's an account of agape love. Agape love. Another smell that comes to light is a smell of money. Another smell that rises out of this account is how the disciples were thinking about themselves 
and they took their frustrations out on Mary. Another smell that arises from this account is the smell of worship in the way that Mary worships Jesus. And then there's another smell that arises, and that is gratitude. But there's a smell that you have to really stop and think about. Remember, this is the last week of the life of Jesus. The last week. Because in a week, He is going to be crucified. So this account has the smell of death in it as well if you think about that. This, um, this account is just so rich. I mean, there's so many preaching lessons out of this, but I'm going to try to combine them for you today. So we see that this event, it happens in Bethany, which is just a few miles from Jerusalem. And I like to think that Jesus is getting some rest and recuperation because he knows what's coming up in a week. He's going to be crucified. And the cause of this meeting was that Jesus has already raised Lazarus to life. So you see, this count has the smell of life in it as well. So Jesus is there to celebrate uh, the, the resurrection of Lazarus. And it is at the home of Simon the leper. Now, we don't know a whole lot about Simon the leper. We can deduce from that and that he was a person that Jesus healed from the leprosy. And we are told in John's account of this same thing that Lazarus, who raised Jesus from the dead, is there, and so is Mary and Martha. Now, how many sermons have you heard about Mary and Martha? That poor old Mary sitting there at the feet of Jesus, and Martha's in there slaving in the kitchen. Evidently, I'm the only one that's ever heard that. That's a wonderful count as well. So as we look closer at this account here today, I think this is a love story. It is a love story. It's a scene of love where Jesus is surrounded by those who truly love him. Who truly love him. They are together enjoying fellowship one with another around the table. Again, poor Martha, let's don't be too hard on her now because people have to eat, right? But that's going to come later. But we see all the loved ones around the table and Jesus is there. And then I want you to see this in your mind's eye. And then from another room comes Mary. She's coming in quietly. And so, first of all, what she does is that she takes some water and she washes the hands of Jesus. She washes his feet. And then it was the tradition of the day that notwithstanding the uh, expensive oil that we're going to talk about, but that you could give people oil because their skin was so parched. It was like an ointment that you would put on. So Jesus is sitting there talking with his friends, enjoying the fellowship. And then we look over there and we see Mary coming in. Not with a bowl like a bull in a china shop, 
But she comes very quietly in. And while they're, the friends are having conversation with each other, just out of the blue, Mary does something that is so extraordinary. So extraordinary. So what does she do? While Jesus is talking, she takes this really expensive nard. And from what I've been able to read and gather, that it comes from India. And it, the color of it is red. So she brings the spike nard, as the Scripture says, and it was worth somewhere a whole year's wages. So somewhere about in the amount of $20,000. And, you know, we have to stop and ask the question, well, where did she get $20,000? And from all I have been able to read and gather that she got that from an inheritance. Evidently, her father has died or something of this nature. So she has got this. Now, people in that day as well, just so you can be fully informed, this really expensive nard or spike nard was used for funerals. When, then when someone died, as we have read and heard so many times in the scriptures about Jesus, how the ladies went and prepared his body, putting this expensive oil on his body. So Jesus is there and Mary silently walks in. Can you hear? Can you hear walking up and just out of the blue because of nothing but love for her Savior. She breaks. Can you hear it? She breaks the oil open. And then what does she do? She starts with the head of Jesus and pours this $20,000 snard on Jesus' head. And it runs down his face. It runs down his body. And on down his robe. And then it goes down to his feet. Now here is the next piece that you need to understand. That it was improper for that day and time. A woman did not touch someone except that was in her immediate family. So the oil is running down our Lord. And then what does she do next? She takes her hair down. Again, something you need to understand. Only a prostitute would take her hair down. But then what does she do? She uses her hair and wipes the feet of our Lord. Think about that a minute. That love that she has brought to our Lord. So we, I was, as I was thinking this week, well, why did Mary do it? Why did Mary do it? I think she was making a statement about her commitment to our Lord. When she broke the flask, there was no going back. She poured it all on Him. And she was making a statement about her value to herself. She was probably, she saved this, and I was probably imagining that maybe she was looking for the right time just to do something like this. And probably she was saving it for her own burial, if you will. And she was making a statement about her value to herself. To herself. 
by this act, Mary was demonstrating that Jesus meant more to her than her own reputation. Now remember, she is at the feet of Jesus touching him and taking her hair and wiping his feet. And maybe if people outside of that few that were there had seen that, just think about what her reputation would have been. But see, that is what I love about this story. is because she doesn't care. She doesn't care what anybody thinks about what she is doing. And she was making a statement about the value of her possessions. To marry nothing in the world was as important to her as Jesus the Christ. Nothing, nothing, nothing was more important to her than Jesus the Christ. And she wanted to give him her very best. Well, I would think that would probably qualify, wouldn't it? That nard at $20,000. And she was making a statement about her, uh, her worthiness to be worshipped or his worthiness to be worshipped and served. Why did Mary do it? Because she was so thankful that Jesus had come into her life, that he had saved her. And she wanted to do something to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you have and are doing for me. She believed the truth that the disciples couldn't grasp. As far as Mary knew, this would be the last time that she would actually see Jesus. So you, are you getting the impact of this? What a dynamic time and moment this is for her. You know, as I was preparing this, I had to stop and ask myself the hard question. When was the last time that I offered the Lord an offering of true love? When was the last time that I broke the bank worshiping our Lord? When was the last time that I threw away pride and gave Him worship, honor, and praise? We don't see a lot of that in today's time. There are very few people who truly love Him more than they love themselves. Hard thing to say, but very true. They are more concerned with their own personal agendas they are more concerned with their possessions or their comfort. There are very few who are willing to serve Him with no thought of getting anything back in return. So, look at your life as I look at mine and answer those questions. And let me just throw a few questions out. Am I, are you totally committed to Jesus in total love and worship? Is Jesus more important to you than anything that you possess in life? Is he? Are you willing to give up all that so you can, you might express that true love for him? Is he worth more to you than your pride? Are you willing to give up all that so you might experience true love for Christ? The lost world needs to witness our expressions, dear friends, of love for the Lord Jesus Christ. So hard questions that we really must answer. Too often we love the Lord when it's convenient. Uh-oh. We love the Lord when it's convenient. 
We love him in between 11 and 12 o'clock on Sunday. We love him when loving him fits into our schedule. We loving we love him when loving him doesn't get in the way of what I got to do today. May Mary's gift truly make us today ashamed of our self centeredness, our half hearted love for the Lord who did everything for us. And then, after she does this, this is something you've got to appreciate and really hate about what happens here. The Bible tells us that some of those standing around were moved with indignation. They were so upset with what Mary had done. That act of selflessness worship was nothing more than a waste, is what those who are standing by. What a waste, Mary. How could you do that? How could you do that? And again, I've shared the price with you of what that was. Then our friend Judas. <laughs> our friend Judas. really gets on to Mary. He said, Mary, just think what we could have given the poor if you hadn't have wasted that on Jesus. Just think how much we could have given to the poor. Well, the truth of Judas is, whether you might or might not know it, that Judas was the treasurer. He was the bag man, we might say, for the disciples. And it was a common practice for Judas to skim off the top of the monies that they had. But he was the one who said, why did you do it, Mary? We could have done better than this. This is such a sad scene, I think. Here's a woman who loves Jesus more than anything, anything, more than her possessions. And she sacrificed her pride, her reputation to honor the one she loved the most. Yet, love often is misunderstood and misinterpreted by the Lord's disciples. And if you read some of the other accounts of this, not only Judas, but some of the other disciples, it doesn't list who was there, but they were upset as well. That why Mary had spent all or used that nard to take care of Jesus. They just didn't appreciate it. I have reached the conclusion that no matter what I or you do in life, if I or you do not do it for the glory of and the honor of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a waste of time, energy, and money. I don't care how much you have or possessions. I don't care how much education you have, how much you do for people around you, or anything else. If you do not do what you do for the glory of God, it's a waste. This is hard to hear this morning, but it is the very truth that we need to hear. And then we see the demonstration 
of the love. When Jesus knows what these men are thinking, I, you know, in my mind's eye, as I was thinking about that this week, Jesus steps up in her defense. And he, I can't imagine that Jesus is saying this in a calm voice. Imagine that there's a rise in Jesus' voice almost. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. She is doing a good thing. The Bible is clear that God's people are to be engaged in good works. It all comes down to who you do your things for. If you do them for others only, you immediately get your reward. If you do them for the glory of God, as an act of love and worship, you will have that reward. And then Jesus begins to preach, if you will, to those that are there. He says, you will always have the poor about you. And then he drops the bomb on them. But I will not be here always. In other words, think about what you're saying and what you're doing. This woman has shown me her true love. And you know, you, you got to get real about this story right here. And it strikes at the heart. And it calls you by name. And it said, when was the last time that you gave your all regardless of the expense for your Savior? And we must answer that question, mustn't we? There's another lesson we can learn from Mary's love gift. She gave him love. She gave him worship. She gave him service. She gave him sacrifice. Because she was walking with him in faith. In faith. And the same thing that the Lord wants for us. He wants us to trust him with our needs. He wants us to trust him with our service to him. And he wants to take him at his word and trust him to do what is right. And then he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you that forever and ever, my paraphrase, that what this woman has done for me today will be written down forever and ever. You see, the scripture is not so much and by calling people's names for all the good. Oh, look at what they did. But this woman, her name is written in God's word. God is teaching us that everything that represents true service to him will never be forgotten. Remember that child of God, everything that you do for God will not be forgotten. Mary did what she could and when she was rewarded accordingly. And here's the question. Have you, have I done what I could? What am I doing? What are you doing? These are hard questions that we must answer. So I challenge you today to look at how you are serving God. Answer the question. Be honest with yourself. How are you serving God today? Is there room for improvement? If he has spoken to your heart today through this gospel message on any level, any level, it's time to come to him now and do what he wants you to do.
Maybe there's someone who needs to make that first profession of faith. Some need to come and repent of a bad attitude. Some need to come and give Him some love right now. This is what He wants, dear friends. He wants you to love Him with your heart, your soul, and your mind. He wants you to love Him. We all need to examine our motives today. Our love and our worship. When you consider what Mary did, here's another hard question. How does my and your love stack up compared to Mary and Jesus? Is it wonderful all it can be or does it seem to be lacking? Today, when we sing our songs and before we go to the Lord's table, I want you to personally, as I will, think about how my love stacks up with Jesus as Mary's love did for him.